something eerily peaceful about a major chord at 3 o'clock in the morning. So after spending a few days in Philadelphia, I am now on the other side of the country in the heart of UCLA. And it's all because I got the very unique opportunity to showcase what I think is one of the most unique specialties and unique fellowship programs in really the entire country. Now, Los Angeles and sports are two words that come together a lot. And this specialty does a really good job of marrying sports with medicine while incorporating groundbreaking research that is borderline sci-fi as well as a really really cool patient population that you work with i'm not going to spoil too much more the program is called brain sport so this is a day in the life of a sports neurologist take it away daniel <laughs> Um, let's see, it's 8.40 in the morning. We are here at UCLA. Uh, I'm a former UCLA Brain Sport Fellow, and um, typical day starts like this. We're right now in the UCLA Wasserman Football Practice Facility, getting all the mouth guards set up. I'm going to do a panel over there, um, because we're doing a study that is actually looking at um, implementing mouth guards for some of our football guys to be able to measure the kind of forces that their brains are under uh, both in practice as well as the games. And um, we're also going to correlate that data with practice videographers footage and then game footage to be able to determine, you know, can this data help us with um, both a concussion diagnosis as well as maybe some of those other subconcussive impacts. Um, that are really concerning now since a lot of it is coming out that it might contribute uh, to CTE development. So this is how my day starts. And then um, usually in the afternoon, I'll also do, you know, clinic, whether that's seeing athletes, military veterans um, with a history of traumatic brain injury or civilians. And then also throw in some procedures into that um, for headaches or, you know, cervical spine pain. And then some research meetings and then um, if I'm lucky enough, I get to do the Brain Sport Podcast. And then um, that's pretty much it. We'll go home, do it again next day. It'd usually be right there, but um, the football guys currently have them on. We're here at the UCLA Washington Football Center. So you can see some pretty cool stuff, some kicks here, Air Jordan, UCLA collab. Um, behind this door is the field, there's a weight room back there. Can't film that, unfortunately, but you know, trust us, it's pretty cool stuff. some AT, some athletic trainers. These are guys that are key if you're ever dealing with sports um, or athletes and any sort of care relating to athletes. Um, these guys are key because they know how the athlete was prior to their injury and how they're doing in their recovery from the injury. And this applies not only to a concussion, but really any orthopedic injury. So let's go check it out. All right, Tyler, how are you doing? Good man, how are you? So this is Tyler, lucky enough to be working with him with the uh, UCLA men's basketball team. Uh, I'm lucky because not only clear line of communication in regards to each athlete, but then also he happens to be super knowledgeable about all things orthopedic injuries and even concussion. So, I try. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, everything has to do with the MD and ATC relationship. Obviously, I deal with the athletes every single day, day in and day out. Um, docs are, I don't want to say on call, but you know, they're they're always there when we need them, but they don't get that day-to-day -day experience that I have with the athletes. So having that relationship um, to be able to provide, you know, exact insight with the, with the MDs whenever they need uh Everything that they need to know is, is critical with it. Um, obviously, especially with concussions, right? Because you'd only see the athletes, you know, however often, you know, when checkups, whatever it might be, or, you know, like tonight when we have a game. Um, but I, I'm with the guys every single day, so I know how they act if something goes wrong, if they're having concussion-like symptoms, and you know, they're just off, I can report those symptoms straight up to you, and then we can make a, a true plan of action on how they are, you know, how do we, how, how we need to treat them best. Right, right, and that's also for like orthopedic injuries too, yeah, exactly. right? Like not only concussion, anytime they're recovering from any sort of injury, right? Mm -hmm. This is our point of contact right here. Sometimes, yeah. especially with concussion, like um, symptoms are so subjective and it's yeah, like exactly. such a new experience, you know what I mean? Exactly. So having someone that's so well versed like Tyler, being able to say, hey, this seems off, that seems off, he's reporting this, sounds like it's from a concussion or sounds like it's from any sort of injury, that's key, so. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. that's the best. Yeah. And so tell me about what this room is and what all goes down in here. Yeah, so I mean, a little bit of everything from immediate, you know, management to triage to the, we use this as a, a mini rehab space. Obviously, we have a, a bunch of a full rehab space over at Acosta, uh, which is where all the other teams pretty much uh, get treated out of. But really, you know, if guys need any type of recovery, any type of movement exercises, corrective exercises, rehabs, you know, performance assessments, anything like that, we can do that all in here. Um, so that's really the goal with all this, obviously. Um, over here, we got our tape stuff. Um, so when guys get taped, if they need, you know, stretch, we're going through modalities, we have game ready, we have normal text, anything that might be uh, used to promote the recovery or the health and well-being of an athlete, it's all done within this room. If you look over here, obviously we have a hot and cold tub. So, you know, post-practice, pre-practice, if we have a guys um, that need, again, to promote recovery, we'll have them do contrast baths. Some of them go in just straight cold tub up to their uh, shoulders. Um, you know, we try to check all the boxes. So this is kind of the ultimate little recovery room. Amazing stuff. Also, check the man's IG out. Dr. T. Lesh, that's Doc the that's Dr. The T. Lesh, yeah, those videos are amazing just from orthopedic injury recoveries and some different exercises that um, you can do pr to promote that recovery. Yeah, it I mean, it's, awesome. all, it's all recovery. It's all just trying to promote like the general health and well-being of not just athletes, but like, you know, humans in general. Yeah. So that's, that's the goal. Amazing. All right, bro. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yep. UCLA and uh, this is where we have clinic where we see um, our concussion patients, traumatic brain injury patients, sports neurology patients. Um, this is also where the Lakers come through for their neurological baseline examinations as well as some other NBA and professional athletes. We see some celebrities here every now and then of course coming come the back way not the same way that we came. Um, but right now we're in the virtual reality lab. So this is where a lot of our research is done and it's really really cool. So. That screen up there, and if you can see, make sure you step over this wire. So we're set up for the BrainSport podcast right now. So that's initially uh, what we're using this room today for, but you know, it's a multi-purpose room, so it can be used for a bunch of different stuff. Um, so the screen, and then if you see up here, we have sensors, and then we also have shoes that have sensors on them, and then we also have some uh, handheld sort of machines that are also sensors, and that is because this is a virtual reality room, we call it the virtual reality lab. And our goal in our study is going to be using virtual reality to see if um, concussion rehabilitation can be improved in virtual reality relative to just regular reality like what we're in now. Um, and I think that virtual reality is really interesting. I did a podcast with Dr. Mayank Mehta who heads the virtual reality lab and is doing a lot of cool work uh, preclinically with a bunch of mouse models. He's actually shown that a certain part of your brain called the hippocampus um, acts completely different in virtual reality, right? So 40% of the neurons shut down and the other 60 are acting completely differently. Um, and this could mean that um, there's an enhanced 
effect in the hippocampus and potentially in other brain regions in virtual reality. So could that be leveraged to enhance traumatic brain injury or brain injury recovery? Can it be used to enhance learning in um, you know, the school classroom, for example? A lot of cool concepts. Um, also, this is, so these two bikes, they're not uh, associated with the virtual reality. So these bikes are cool uh, in that um, it helps to provide a service called Exercise CBT. Right, and um, how this plays into concussion rehabilitation is a lot of the patients that we see uh, are having persistent symptoms after their concussion, well beyond like several months after their concussion, and a big limiting factor is exercise. Right, so they're having these symptoms when they exercise, and there seems to be a significant psychological component. Not to say that that's separate from the brain or separate from any sort of uh, physiology, because certainly intimately associated, but nonetheless, treatment for a lot of these symptoms that are persistent is cognitive behavioral therapy, right? But usually that's done sort of in a room setting. But um, what's special about this is our psychologist will have the patient on the bike exercising, getting the heart rate up to a certain heart rate, um, and then actually doing cognitive behavioral therapy while they're exercising, while they're having symptoms, to um, psychologically reorganize how they're thinking about their symptoms and then how they're pushing past them. Yeah, and we do the podcast here, um, and that's Reese. Give, give Reese some props, man. He's an amazing up, producer. He helps, us the, he helps us produce the podcast, um, which we're gonna film right now. Um, over here is the sort of the hit IQ stuff, right, which we talked about earlier, doing the mouth guards. Um, you know, it's just an iPad with hit IQ. We can get some data from the mouth guards onto this iPad too. Um, and that's pretty much it. This is where we do a lot of our research. Super exciting space. Um, but now we have a podcast to do, dude, so shut that down. So um, we finished recording the podcast, but I've been doing a lot of talking and I don't even think I've even told you or your audience what the Brain Sport program even is, in case y'all were wondering. Um, so the Brain Sport program, we primarily see sports neurology patients, which you know usually ends up being traumatic brain injury and concussion patients, uh, mostly in the context of um, athletics. We see a lot of our military veterans through our Operation Men program who, you know, have suffered a TBI in, the, in line of service, um, have concomitant PTSD. We usually do an uh, intensive um, treatment program for them uh, where they'll come out and for six weeks um, they'll just get intensive treatment to be able to improve their, um, their concussion, traumatic brain injury, and PTSD symptoms. So we see those patients, you know, we also do baseline neurological exams for professional teams like the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, and then, you know, also there's a lot of freedom in fellowship training within the program um, to be able to do a lot of elective rotations that you would like to incorporate into your own training. Like, for example, I did um, uh, interventional spine um, elective rotation for, a, for an entire year. Uh, during my fellowship that got incorporated in, into my schedule and was amazing. Um, most importantly though, we do a lot, a lot of research, specifically in the context of traumatic brain injury and concussion. Um, if you ask me, I might be biased, but um, uh, I think we're one of the leaders, uh, if not the nation of the entire world in terms of um, the kind of research that we're doing in concussion. All right, so a couple of research things. We talked about some of the research we're doing in the VR lab. We talked about the Hit IQ Mouth Guard study earlier today that we're doing. We also have, the Brainstorm program also has a $10 million grant. Uh, it's a multi-site grant and we're one of the sites where um, we're going to be um, looking at pediatric patients after they've had a concussion and measuring like all sorts of different neurophysiologic metrics that, are, that tend to be affected in, uh, in concussion, cognition, vestibular system, autonomic system, a bunch of cool stuff like that. Um, and the goal of this massive study is um, to forward the assessment and then the treatment of concussion by organizing um, the different concussion patients into what we call endophenotypes, right? Which means how a concussion patient presents, you know, because some patients can present with 
just migraines, right? So that would be, for an example, a migraine phenotype. Uh, other patients predominantly present with cognitive symptoms, so that would be um, sort of this cognitive phenotype. So this is what this $10 million grant is, to, is to be able to organize those different endophenotypes. And when we can organize the different endophenotypes, then uh, that means that we can optimize treatment for each one, right? So if, if a migraine person is coming, uh, a migraine endophenotype is coming, then we can say, okay, this migraine endophenotype tends to do well with this treatment, so this is the treatment that's gonna be applied to that endophenotype. So that's really, really cool. Um, gotta give a shout out to uh, my friend and colleague, Kevin Bickhart, he's doing a really cool study. He got a $3 million Department of Defense grant to look at uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation in patients that have had a concussion that are having persistent symptoms after a concussion. He's gonna layer in an fMRI into those patients to look at those, pa those patients' brains before and after transcranial magnetic stimulation and seeing if that'll improve symptoms too. Uh, personally, I'm doing research looking at the effect of uh, cannabinoids, specifically cannabidiol in the context of concussion. Um, can CBD help symptoms uh, that people experience after concussion? Can it improve the recovery from a concussion? Um, I think there's uh, a very, very reasonable reason for that to be the case. You guys can holla at me if you want all those reasons or not. Um, and we're also doing a lot of preclinical work, um, looking at uh, different mice models of concussion and traumatic brain injury and trying to find out, you know, does exercise improve it? Do different kinds of therapeutics improve it? Different stuff like that. So pretty sure I missed some. I'm sorry to the Brainsport program if I missed some, but um, those are some of the projects that I personally feel most excited about. Um, and I wanted to share, so. All right, buddy, for the last stop in our day-to-day -day activities, this is um, a very small room, but nonetheless a very important room because this is, you remember the $10 million grant that I was talking about mm -hmm. where we're taking pediatric post-concussion patients and trying to determine, you know, what kind of symptoms are they clustering in? And um, we're also looking at physiological metrics, right? So like, what's their heart rate doing? Um, how um, uh, briskly are their pupils reacting, right? Different measures of the autonomic nervous system. We're doing some memory testing on the wall there for cognitive systems. Um, and then, you know, we have an EKG here and, um, uh, you know, a respiratory monitor to be able to actually measure respiratory rate as well as uh, CO2 rate. There's a lot of other stuff in here that I don't want to bore you guys with. We also have some balance testing too, some reaction time testing in here. So basically this is the room where every pediatric concussion patient that, that consents or that their parent consents for uh, this study, they'll come in here and they'll have all this testing done um, in addition to, you know, we're, we'll look at their symptoms and different stuff like that. And then they'll also uh, be getting an MRI too, to be able to pull all of those different objective metrics together to see, um, you know, what kind of phenotype, right? What are these um, clusters of symptom? What are they presenting with? Different stuff like that. So um, really exciting stuff. Um, I think that, you know, if you're interested in the field of sports neurology, traumatic brain injury, this is the fellowship. Um, it's absolutely incredible. It's allowed me to do so much from interventional spine to my own research in CBD, to being part of the, this kind of research that has $10 million behind it. Um, and then also seeing really special patients like athletes, military veterans, and then just regular you know, civilians that got in a motor vehicle accident that are trying to get back to life, trying to get back to work and they can't. So um, you know, at the end of the day, I'd say amazing program. Uh, thanks for coming out. Thanks for uh, touring with me. Um, and if you guys have any questions or comments or concerns, Instagram will be below somewhere, right, Andy? Yes, it will be. Yeah. So just reach out to me, and I'd be, you know, happy to help you guys along, put you in contact with the right people, if that's something you'd be interested in. And that's pretty much it. Alrighty. That's thanks for day, having me. Is that a day in the life, or uh, I don't know? That is a day in the life. Day in the life. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.